Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob of Rob. Yes, Ask Rob and Rob, episode 29. Here we go. Really interesting question in today. A bit of an international flavour to today's episode. Just showing that wherever in the world you are, there is a way of asking us a question. In fact, Rob, there are two ways. There are. You can go to thepropertyhub.net forward slash podcast, or you can call in on 013808 triple zero three five. That's 013808 triple zero three five. Give us a call, go to the website, leave a recording and ask us your question. That is exactly what Mark did from a lovely Bali. Uh, hi Rob and Rob and this is Mark calling from Bali. I'm not, in, not too sure whether you've got too many members calling in from Bali. Um, looking for advice on whether to continue investing in property here and developing some or uh, to invest in buy-to-lets in the UK really, really could do with some good, sound advice. Cheers, guys. Bye. You know, for all my travel, I've never been to Bali. Maybe, maybe I should ask Mark for some tips and make that happen. But Mark raises a really interesting question. It's something that we were talking about recently at the Property Hub Summit. We had a few expats attending over the weekend, originally from the UK, now living abroad, and they were asking similar things. The answer really, I think, depends on what kind of property strategy you want to pursue. If you want to do developments of some kind or something quite intensive, you're going to struggle to do that from a distance. So we were talking to people who really loved the idea of doing flips or HMOs and things like that. But doing that from a distance realistically is very, very difficult. So if you are in a location where you've got the skills, you understand the local market and you think you can make it work, then doing it in Bali might be a really great idea. That local knowledge is quite hard to replicate. However, if you just want to do something simpler, there are big advantages to investing in the UK, of course, Rob. There are. You've got a very, very robust legal system. It's been around for a while. It's one of the oldest in the world. And you know what you're getting. There isn't any tension. There isn't any uncertainty. And that comes from a political system as well. Those in charge may not be that popular, but it's been around for a while and it's stable. The political scene there in the UK is stable too. And also the pound is a currency that is seen as one of the more important ones as well globally. So with all those things in mind, the UK property from an investment point of view is very safe and stable. And of course, that doubles up with the supply and demand as well. The lack of property and the large amount of people who want some. So therefore, prices over the long term push up as well. Of course, all this being said, Mark, it's going to come down to what you want. What do you want to achieve? If property in Bali will get you there and you're nearly going to make it happen, then maybe you carry on. But possibly diversifying and reducing your risk is important to you. So then maybe the UK should take place. It's hard for us to say exactly what you should do without knowing exactly what you've done and where you want to get to. But the UK, from a safety point of view, is certainly worth considering for all the things we just mentioned. Yeah, as an expat, you are in kind of a privileged position because rather than just understanding one market, you understand two. A lot of people from the UK like the idea of investing abroad, but there's actually a lot of risk to them doing so because they have a lack of knowledge. And so it's much easier for them to make mistakes. As someone who understands both markets, you can look at both of them, understand the pros and cons, the kind of strategies that will work in that market and decide which makes the most sense for your goals. And as Rob said, it really does all come down to your goals. Goal setting is something very important. It's something we've talked about plenty. If you go to the show notes, we will link to the episode that we did on goal setting and also to our free goal setting course that a lot of people have found very, very useful. Once you've got real clarity on what you want to achieve, I think you'll find that the decision kind of makes itself. It's always really tempting to kind of look around at all the things you can do, all the things that you see other people doing and see the advantages of doing all those things and be tempted by them. But when you get really, really clearly defined about what it is that you want, normally one will start to stand out above all the others. And at that point, you can just go, okay, everything else looks really interesting, but no, I'm just going to concentrate on my thing. And once you've decided on that path, it means you can just really focus on that and you'll get much better results. So I definitely recommend checking out those resources and giving yourself a time frame to make that decision. When that date arrives, just decide once and for all and go for it. So I hope that helps, Mark. If you, Mark, or anybody else would like to find out more information and look at the links to that course we just mentioned, 
go to the Property Hub net forward slash podcast or if you want to go straight to the course the property hub.net forward slash courses either or you'll get there in the end so that's us for another week we are back of course next week on tuesday but before then we will be back with the property podcast yes we will and we look forward to seeing you then bye-bye bye-bye